Hi, I'm Dr. Jeremy Pettis. Steve Edelman here. And we are here at Chateau Edelman to do our exercise challenge. And what does that mean? Well, in about in an hour from now, I'm gonna hype hop on a Peloton cycle bike and do a 45 minute cycle session. And Steve's gonna be on a treadmill right next to me, working out for 45 minutes to try to show you some tips on how to tackle exercise. Why are we doing this topic, Steve? Well, we know that one of the toughest things to do is to keep your blood sugars in a pretty good range during exercise if you have type one. Type twos have it a little bit easier, but if you don't think about it ahead of time, you're gonna have some issues during exercise and, so and after. Here's some things that, that I tell kind of every patient when I see them in clinic when it comes to exercise. So what is the common pattern? The common thing is that when you're doing a cardio workout, you can go low during that exercise. So we wanna talk about ways to avoid that low. And then when people stop exercising, they can have this rebound high. So what are ways that we, we help patients with that? Well, first of all, something that's probably the number one most effective thing, if you will, that's, that's often forgotten, is that the time of day is really critical. People tend to be more insulin resistant in the morning and more insulin sensitive at night, meaning it's easier to go low at night, which is you know, kind of a bad thing, and a lot harder to go low in the morning. So if you're dealing with, with particularly with lows, think about adjusting, if you can, the time of day that you exercise, I know yeah, it's tough. I'll just add on that when people do that, it's definitely true, but they have a tendency to bounce higher after stopping. Okay. In my experience. You can't win. That's yeah. the life of type it, one diabetes. Yeah. And, and we're here an hour before and the preparation is key. You yeah. Know, you want to go first? Yeah. So here's some of the things that I, I tell people. You really have to prepare an hour or two before. A lot of times patients will say, well, I adjust my basal. And I say, well, when do you do it? And they say, well, right when I start exercising. Way too late. It's not going to do anything. If you're adjusting your settings, you really need to do it an hour or two before. Steve can talk a little bit more about that because right now he's on a hybrid closed loop system. For the purposes of this video, I actually switched over to shots three days ago, all in the name of science. Did the you really I do, do that for that? Yeah, it's a pain in the butt. That transition is rough. So I'm, I'm on a shot. I can't adjust my, my basal rate. I got my Traceba last night and it's just doing its thing. So my strategy is going to be to eat um, and under bolus for what I'm eating. So I go into the exercise a little bit higher so I can kind of work it down and I'll take carbs during the activity if I want, if I need to. Um, so I'm gonna try to go into it a little bit high. The other thing I'll say, because we're not How doing high? here. How high? You know, honestly, around 180 or so, between 180 and 200 would be my, my goal. Um, if you get higher than that, you know, you, you might not feel good. The other thing I wanted to make sure to mention is that a lot of people do cardio at the gym. And if you do weights before you do the cardio, that's been shown to help reduce the, the onset of hypoglycemia. It's a good way of, you know, people say, what should I do first? Try to do weights first and then your cardio. So anyways, I'm on shots. I'm just gonna eat something. Try to, like I said, go a little bit higher. What's your plan? Okay, I'm on a hybrid closed loop system. I'm on the Omnipod and I'm uh, looping with my Riley Link. And an hour before I get on my program, and I set the usual goal from 120, I change it to 150 to 160. I reduce my insulin delivery from 100% down to 80%. And then I'll put in the time duration because I don't want to forget to turn it off. Right. Uh, and I can do that with the looping app. I might do three hours. Um, and I, my goal is to go into exercise with a blood sugar about 150, 160 with a horizontal trend arrow. And if I've been that way for an hour, I do extremely well, especially when my goal is set a little higher. Right. So if you're not on loop, you can put it in exercise mode. You can create another program if you're on just a regular pump of, of reducing the insulin. But you have to kick these things in an hour or two before doing it. And just like you said, when I've used exercise mode, I've forgotten to take it out of yeah. exercise yeah. mode. Yeah. So you have to remember to do that too. Yeah. So we okay. are going to go do our prep stuff. Um, I'm not going to speak to you for the next hour. Just out of, like just, I'm just going to concentrate on my, my plans here. We're going to go change, come back and talk to you guys, so we'll see you in a minute. Okay. All right. All right, Steve. Looking good, buddy. Yeah, All me right. too, man. Nice so, shirt. Yeah, we got our TCOID biking jerseys on here for our, you know, our ride and our walk. Um, we wanted to check back in real quick with what our blood sugars are doing. So Steve, you wanna go first, your yeah. update? Sure, I started off at 106 about an hour ago, and I thought, well, I had half of a half of sandwich. I made all my settings, reduced my insulin delivery by 20%, and I changed my goal from 120 to 150, and um, hopefully that keeps me in range. I, I would have liked to have started off at 150, but 
hey, uh, not every day is perfect. Yeah, well, I ate about 30 grams of carbs, didn't bolus, and now I'm up to 219. Is that a perfect blood sugar? No. But to be honest, I, I feel pretty good about that because I know I'm going to work it down. That is a nice thing about exercise. I didn't have to take any insulin. Now I can just work it off. That's a good way to actually lose weight. You're using less insulin, things like that. So 219, gasp. You know, I'm not in a perfect range, but hey, this is real life. Let's see if I can exercise and kind of bring myself smoothly in for a ride. So let's do okay. it. All right. All right. Let's head upstairs, get on our equipment. You're going that way. Okay. okay. All right. Okay, here we are. Fist bump, I'm on my Peloton, I got my guy Cody Rigsby going. Steve is on his treadmill, we're in his exercise room. We meet here every Monday, Wednesday, and every other Thursday for our <laughs> exercise routine. <laughs> and we're gonna do 45 minutes and check in with you guys when things occur. If we go low, we need carbs, anything like that. Yeah, my blood sugar is 106. I did eat the other quarter sandwich. I also want to let you know I'm going three miles an hour at 12 degree incline, as high as this treadmill goes. And I always like, I always put my phone in my pocket. I want to get credit for the steps. If I put it on Strava, one time I, I went one foot <laughs> based on GPS. All right, and I'm turning on my watch to get credit too, and we'll see you guys soon. Okay, we're halfway through, 22 minutes. My blood sugar is 129, diagonal up and eating that whole half sandwich, it's finally sinking in. And you know what, it's just Murphy's Law. Uh, it's always tough to eat the right amount of food when you think you might get low. And um, I'm not sure, but in a few minutes, if it doesn't flatten out, I'm gonna turn off my pump settings so it goes back to a goal of 120 and, and turn off the uh, reduction in insulin. You know, and I am now at 240. So am I happy about that? Absolutely not. But it just goes to show you, I'm an endocrinologist. I know a lot about diabetes. I've been planning ahead for this for like a month and still you know, can't get in range. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a couple units, not necessarily to get my blood sugar down now, but again, to think ahead about that rebound high to help get some insulin on board so I don't spike after I eat. So I'm gonna catch my breath. All right, so here we are just a couple minutes later. I'm now 2.32. So I've started to come down. Again, that's not because of the insulin, it's just because I'm working hard. But I'm happy to see it finally coming back down into range. Steve's got an update too. Yeah, I was 129 diagonal up at the halfway point, 22 minutes and 30 seconds. And I said, I'm gonna turn off my settings so I can get a little of insulin through my pump. And then I said, I'm gonna wait one more five minute cycle. And sure enough, 135 straight across, meaning that I'm leveling off. So I'm not changing my settings at all. I should come in for a good landing. Well, I'm glad one of us did a good job. Proud of you, buddy. Yeah, I still had to eat half a sandwich, so <laughs> you know what? Uh, one of us, total success. Hopefully you'll get below 200 at the end. Oh, thanks, bud. <laughs> okay, we'll check in soon. See you guys. Hello, everybody. We're done. I'm going first. Woo. Halfway through, I was 129 diagonal up, and I said to you, if it doesn't flatten out, I'm gonna give myself a little bolus or go back to the regular pump settings. And it did, it went to 37 diagonal across, now it's 142 straight across, and um, I did not have to eat any of my favorite low glucose snacks, goo and or shot blocks. So I think I did pretty well. Yeah, so you did, Steve did awesome by the way. So my blood sugar is now 204, angled down. So I am kind of coming down. I think right now, now that we're, we've stopped our exercise, this is where we really need to focus on how to avoid a rebound high. And the reason that happens is that when you're doing this cardiovascular exercise, you've got your adrenaline going, your heart rate going, your body's mobilizing glucose, your muscles are using it up. And if you just stop all of a sudden, all that glucose is still coming into your system but you're not burning it as much. And I've been taking less insulin, right. add, add that. So the adrenaline going and less insulin is just a setup for going high. Ways to avoid that. I took a couple units before I stopped. That's something you can do 10, 20 minutes before you exercise or stop exercise. The cool down though is critical. I just did 45 minutes, still catching my breath. I'm gonna do 10 minutes, just kind of flat road, let my body cool off. And you'll notice that that'll really help with the rebound high. If you run, you can walk the last mile home or something like that 
The important thing is you just don't go full throttle and stop. Yeah, and I turned, want to remind everyone, <laughs> go back to the regular pump settings. If you forget, you're going to be high a lot. And I'm going to give myself three units. I'm 142 straight across. I probably still have some of that sandwich in my stomach. I took less insulin for the last 45 minutes. And three units is not going to cause me to get low. And I'm going to keep an eye on my CGM to make sure I don't really rebound. But I am a setup for rebounding high. All right, so we are going to cool down. As you can see, I'm a sweater. Steve is not. Um, we're going to get ourselves beautiful and cute again and come <laughs> back and check in with you guys. <laughs> All right, guys, we're back. I had to jump in the pool real quick. I, it was a pretty, pretty good cannonball. Thankfully, Steve was out of the splash zone for that. But we're back here. You should have worn a bathing suit, <laughs> yeah. though, I wish. Um, an hour after getting off of our exercise equipment, I'm 175 now, so kind of coming down into range. I'm, I'm happy about that. I'm not happy about how high I bumped up, but it just it goes to show you that I've been thinking about this and planning this for a long time. You know, I went much higher than I, I would have liked to. I'm, I'm happy I'm coming down into range now, but Steve, give your update, and then we can talk about that some more. Yeah, you know what? Same with me. I mean, I... I had a great practice run on this past weekend. I was just flat the whole time. But as you know, um, I had to eat half a sandwich, but I ended up okay. And I gave myself three units when I was 142 straight across when I stopped. Then, next time I looked at it, I'm 171 diagonal up. After stopping. After stopping, about 10, 15 minutes. Classic rebound high. Yeah, and I gave myself three when I stopped. I gave myself five more. The next thing I know, I'm 191 one arrow up, I got that alert, my little alert in Dexcom. So I got out my Afreza and I took eight units because I do not like rebounding high. Now, is that stacking my dose? Three, five, and eight of Afreza? Yeah, but I have the other half of that sandwich waiting for me and a, and a couple more cans of Boochcraft. So when you do rebound high, um, sometimes we call those hollow highs because it's the adrenaline and everything that we talked about. And if you do correct, they say to, to use about half as much insulin as you normally would. So Steve's got a lot of insulin on board, but he's going to eat. But the point that we were just kind of bantering about is, is we're, we're not trying to mess up. In fact, quite the opposite. We were hoping to, to stay in range, uh, but who wants to see us do good, right? So, you know, <laughs> I went high and I'm kind of coming into a, a better place now, but then Steve had this rebound high. This happens to all of us. If you struggle with, with exercise, you're not alone. And exercise is hard enough to begin with, to get yourself you know, to the gym or whatever it is. And we have to deal with all these extra things on top of it. Um, it's definitely worth it. And if we did this again tomorrow, you know, we'd probably do better, hopefully. Yeah. It's not that we did awful, but gosh, you know, we're just, we're juggling so much and so much you have to think about. But you know, it's interesting. I'm 178 straight across now and you're about 175. Yeah. So we got there, <laughs> he went high, he went down. I was looking great, shot up and now down. And I'm sure it's gonna drop when the sub-Q insulin kicked in, but I got the other half of that sandwich waiting. So other things to highlight, um, you know, keep in mind when you do exercise that you can be insulin sensitive for the next 12, 24 hours. So you have to worry about overnight lows, especially if you exercise in the evening. So you might need to back off your insulin if you're on a pump to, to avoid that if you notice that happening. It's also a good time to talk about some of the advantages of pumps. I can't really futz with anything when I'm just on a long acting insulin. Steve's been, you know, whether it was good or bad, you've been messing with, you know, different rates all, all the time and you can change rates overnight if you want, but that is one big advantage of pumps. Yeah, and I would say, you know, Jeremy just asked me before we started filming this ending part, you know, what, why do you jump up so high? What do you think? Well, I have the, this half of the sandwich still being absorbed. I turned my insulin way down my pump, my hybrid closed loop had the basal rate turned off because my goal was at 150. And then when you stop, all hell breaks loose. And I would say this, if I could go back in time, I would have done better at planning my hour before. So I wouldn't have had to eat half a sandwich. Got it. And then I think I would have been golden. But as you all know, you know, we have type one, it's a crapshoot. I don't know if you guys heard this, but Steve had half a sandwich before he went. You probably heard that a couple times. But <laughs> it, um, and if I had to do mine over again, I just I probably would have just eaten a little bit less. I was a little bit aggressive trying to get my blood sugars up high. It ended up coming down okay, um, but it, that's that's the roller coaster. You know, so you know, no one likes to get low. Yeah. You know? So keep fighting the good fight. Um, you know, maybe we'll do this again sometime when we're better trained. But um, yeah. 
Hope you guys enjoyed it, and we'll see you for the next one, I guess. We're gonna get back in the pool. <laughs> see ya.